Real good. So today we have a very, very special uh, privileged event I have here. Kevin Wilson, who in the UK is one of the best, best bonsai artists uh, who can create some beautiful, beautiful bonsai. I'm nowhere like that. I only teach babies how to do bonsai. So, as I say, Kevin has very kindly agreed to come to Herons to show our staff what uh, can be achieved and teach us a few things. Learning and teaching uh, are two different things. Uh, we all like to learn, but very few people can teach, and I'm sure Kevin can teach us because he's forever conducting workshops and demonstrations. So we are privileged to have this opportunity to have him. So I know that Kevin likes to work on ewes, and these are the ewes that we grow here at Herons. These ewes, believe it or not, were only finger thick about 20 years ago, and they were sold to me for one pound each. One pound each, because they were not very straight. They need straight ewes. So I, I think I bought 1,000 of them. 1,000 one pound ewes. Now I won't tell you which nursery it was. It was an order that was rejected because I told you the trees were not straight. So I planted a hedge all around the nursery. The ewe hedges were planted with those one pound ewes. And after 20 years, in fact, after 17 years, this ewe became so thick some of you will remember, three years ago we had a digger and we dug up quite a few of them. Yeah. We in fact dug up 10 ewes. Subsequently we dug more. But of those 10, seven survived and this is one of the seven. So these were hedge height which is six to eight feet. So we cut the thing down two, three feet and we let all these new shoots grow. Thick branches we cut off and we're encouraging thin branches to grow. So there we are. So I'm going to now ask Kevin to tell us, think aloud, what he's thinking when you look at a tree like this. Well, for a start, yeah, this tree has a really, really powerful base. If you can see there, yeah. It's not too ugly over here? No, no, no? the way it leaves the ground is perfect okay. for, for my sort of All style, right. yeah. yeah. Um, because like when we're doing trees, yeah, what the, the way I think about it, yeah, is the story, yeah, yes, of the tree, yes. yeah. So what I have to do is I have to think, you know, where's this tree growing? Mm. What's the height of it? What's mm. the scale of it? What elements have been mm. uh, lashing this tree, yeah? yeah? You know, obviously we're trying to make a really old tree, yeah, maybe you know, a thousand years old, yeah. We have two you know? trees which are four thousand years old. I'll take you there if you well, want. Well, I'd love to see them, yeah. yeah? But you know that's the that's the impression we're trying to make okay. is, a, is a tree that's a thousand the mother trees yeah of the mm. forest basically yeah you know what I mean we're not after growing all the little seedlings yeah. around all the all mm. the trees that are you know sort of in mid growth yeah we want the mother tree that create the whole forest okay. that's what I'm after yeah. anyway yeah a mountain style of tree well because of this big root on this side. Mm. Um, what this enables me to do is change the orientation on this because tree. Because it's yeah. not radio, you know, not the conventional No, it's radio. not convo no, mm. it's, but what we're showing, yeah, is the wind. Oh. You know? So we need to show the snow and the wind, mm. and this will show the wind, yeah? So what I'll be able to do is I'm going to change the orientation on this okay. tree to show that this tree has maybe been living near the coast mm -hmm. and it has a 50 knot wind yeah, crashing into it, you know? And this route, yeah, will enable me to do that, okay. yeah? So, when I see something, you know, quite ugly on a tree, yeah, I, I don't dismiss it immediately. I bring it to the fore, yeah, and try and make, make it, it a beautiful. feature. Yes, oh, okay. you know, and I'll see you do a similar thing, okay. yeah, you know. Um, so for me, this is beautiful. Oh, yeah. good. So you know, what is ugly can be beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's I what think we it's want. Same you know? with people. <laughs> <laughs> a bit like me. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there you go. See, so we've got this very <laughs> vertical tree, yeah, you know. And uh, what I'm going to do next, actually, before I do anything, yeah, is find the front, the absolute okay. front on right. this tree. Okay. Because if you start styling a tree, yeah, and spinning it around, you know, you never actually designed the tree, yeah, it needs a front and a back. Okay. So that's what we're going to do, is find the absolute front, yeah. And I might have to bow down in front of this tree, yeah, to actually do that, yeah. Do you so, want it higher up? Um, no, I think okay. I'll, I'll work here, yeah, and then we'll see okay. how we go, yeah. So, absolute front. 
But that route on the left will dictate the front to a large extent. Absolutely, it? yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, that's the whole, at the moment, right. yeah. Okay. That's all I'm thinking okay. about, yeah. That's the other thing, right? If you start thinking about the whole tree, yeah, when you start designing a tree, you'll never get to the end. Mm. You have to decompartmentalize what you're thinking about, yeah, you know what I mean? So and the front and back of the tree is largely, largely determined by the roots. Absolutely, okay. yeah. Not many Absolutely. people realize that, don't no. they? Absolutely. So what I'm looking for, I'm now also thinking about the carving that I'll do on the yeah. tree and, um, and the movement, where the movement starts mm -hmm. from. Because the other thing, right, is it's repeating patterns through the mm -hmm. tree. Mm -hmm. If you look at Mr. Kimura's book, every book here that he's written has a fractal on the front of it, oh. a computer-generated fractal, which is a, a repeating pattern, yeah, into mm -hmm. the miniature and into the infinitum, yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, like triangle and triangle. That's, that's right. It. It's mm. it's like the growing, oh. you know. Uh, and then this is what we're trying to do here. Yeah, you know what I mean. Is make this so it has the same movement. Yeah, from root to tip. Mm. You know, and if we've got that same movement all the way through there, yeah, we're getting somewhere near nature. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> so what I'm looking for now is this root, and how that's going to determine the way I carve it. Yeah. And also, yeah, sometimes. <coughs> These trees have a cut me hairline, yeah. It's in extraordinary, yeah. Yeah? yeah. You know, like this one, yeah. You know, look, it's you can see, right? This is feeding. Like certain, a yeah, it's oh. feeding certain branches yeah. up here, yeah. And look at this, look. Oh. We've got that swelling there, mm. and we've got that swelling there, and like I know, right, yeah, that that was probably feed this middle part was probably feeding this part, yeah. Okay. And uh, I know I can remove all of that, yeah, in there, yeah, no problem at all, yeah. Mm -hmm without damaging that mm -hmm. tree, yeah. So that's a good thing also, yeah. Now, if I can just air my thoughts. Yeah. You know, with this thin part here, I'd often thought that this is a potential leader, but perhaps not. Is it too drastic? It's too... It's too thin? Too linear. Oh, okay. You know, okay. You know the, my idea is to you make it... You can't make any curves by carbon. No, that. that's okay. right, yeah. And, and the thing is, we're being dictated yeah, by okay. this route, yeah. It's so, very powerful. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is uh, three bits of wire. Yeah. I'm going to put a datum in the absolute front. Okay. Well, I say the absolute front, yeah, you know what I mean? It's organic, yeah? So as we move change along, it. I might change it slightly, yeah? So in goes the datum, and then we know the front. And that's my front in there, if you want to show that, yeah? So for those who are watching this video, Kevin has put three spikes in. Very, very often people just put one, but one doesn't line no, up. No, it doesn't line up. <laughs> it doesn't line it up. So you need at least two, if not three, to line it up. So there's a little tip that some of you may like to learn from. Okay. So now... You won't tinker with the branches at this stage. Are they too long? Um, Leave them. They're... There's going to be a lot come out of yes. it, yeah, that's for sure. No, I mean the length. It's not oh, the thing. length. No, I won't okay. do that. The thing is, yeah, what I do, yeah, is uh, even the best bonsai artists, when they're working, yeah, you see these guys come along and chop branches off, yeah. right, and all the branches they don't need, yeah, and then when they come to style it, yeah, they go, oh, maybe if I hadn't cut that one off, <laughs> yeah, it would have been fine, yeah. Okay. So what I tend to do, right, is take off what I absolutely know yeah. I'm not going to need, and then I'll leave all the others, yeah, okay. you know. Um, and we'll see how we Even the that. long branches? Even the long branches, okay. yeah. But I'll take off okay. the ones I absolutely know okay. that I don't need, yeah. So the first thing we're going to do is I need some muscle for this. Yeah. It's changed the orientation. It's one of the, <clears throat> it's one of the major things we've got in the armory, yeah, to show the, to show the nature, okay. yeah. So immediately this... What do you want to do? We're going to lift it up this way, yeah, and put blocks underneath. Okay. You know? Steve, you want help? So if you want to help me, Paddy, we'll just lift it and Richard put them in here. Okay. Oh, sorry, it's got more. in the way. Yeah. <laughs> a bit more, Richard. See, that's why we didn't throw these things, you know? We were building and people were going to burn them. I said, no. I'll put that one there. We also need to lean it towards the front right. Mm -hmm. You know, see now, yeah, when the soil goes in there, these juvenile roots here that are quite ugly now, yeah, will be a little bit more buried. 
Okay. You know, and uh, this comes to the fore, yeah, this, this, this thing here. Are you tilting it because the tree is too straight or? It's too straight. Okay. And also, yeah, this is dictating, yeah? Okay. Because this, you know, you know, maybe we've got 50 knot wind here going over yeah. this tree, yeah, okay. in the winter, yeah? And this tree has been pulled over, yeah, over time. And this tree is, one thing trees know how to do is balance themselves, yeah, you know, yeah. and hang on, yeah. So this is what this has done. Okay. So immediately, yeah, the story is becoming real, yeah, you know, with this, with this lean on the tree, yeah. So there, you see, immediately this is, this has got stability, yeah. You can see this is holding yeah. the tree in that position, yeah. yeah. It seems quite dramatic, yeah, but like what we've done there is set up, um, some dynamics here, you know okay. what I mean? The tree is now looking dynamic, yeah? So, <clears throat> now I'm gonna have a good old think about what branches I'm gonna need. Also, now what I'm gonna do is clean the front of this tree okay. away, yeah? So, I know I'm not gonna need any of these branches that are in the front, so I'm gonna dismiss these. I might not dismiss that one. No, you're right. I left these thicker branches in case they could be used. Yeah, the thing is, these two have. Uh, I think they've died. Yeah, you know what I mean. So we're gonna. But the other thing is, um, you know, you were. I saw one of your videos. You were saying. Yeah, we're better off working with the soft bro. Yeah. Because then we have total control of the tree, yeah, from beginning to end. So, okay. This is quite a good branch. This could be our apex, yeah, along with some of these here, yeah, could work really So, well. have you more or less decided that you're going to just gin all this? That's yeah. coming out, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm going to saw that back. Yeah. I'm not going to do too many gins, yeah, yeah on it, yeah. What I'm going to do is mostly trunk carving, okay. yeah. Oh. Um, mm, there seems, you know, there seems to be an over proliferation of gins, yeah, these yeah. days. Okay. And you end up with massive great gins long. like this, yeah. yeah, that are long. Three foot long. And the thing is, right, is long gins, yeah, are young gins. Mm. Short gins are old gins. Mm. So, you know, we're gonna try, I mean, obviously this, we're trying to get a thousand year old tree or something, yeah. So, you know, I'm not gonna do too many. Where replicable, yeah, then I'll do them, yeah, but you know. So, so what I don't know if one of you guys has got a saw. Yeah. I need this thing saw now. Which one do you want? Do you want my one that I was using the other day? Yeah. Or? You can do that, Paddy. Yeah, just saw across there. Mate. Yeah, as I've got over, I've got laser as well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which one do you want? Yeah, if you just saw across there and get rid of this one. Don't chip the trunk. Hold it up. Let me see the rings. I don't know. Maybe the lady can get it. Just need to tie it around. So, the tool I'm going to be using. I'll cut it out now. Oh, lovely. Yeah. So all I'm going to be using is a uh, Makita die grinder. Yeah, okay. This is the 901. This has been discontinued. Oh. Um, but I still have a few of these and I'll repair them, oh. you know, when they actually burn out the uh, yeah. brushes, yeah. But there's this one, the new one, which is the Makita Max. Yeah. And uh, this is just as good. It's just slightly underpowered, yeah, from the, ni the 906, oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, but it does the job. You don't use a router or not for this job? No, I mean, this is the best thing, yeah, because, right, this is really ergonomic, yeah, oh. and it's really easy to hold, yeah. Uh, the other thing is I use this at full speed at 25,000 okay. RPM because I'm used to using oh. it, yeah, but what I suggest anyone uh, starting with the Makita is there's a dimmer switch you can buy, yeah, that oh. you plug in and it's got a little um, dial on it speed. and you can actually change the speed oh, okay. to much lower speed yeah mm. and i would actually advocate doing that yeah okay. you know. 
Um, excellent tool, yeah? You start off with this, yeah? You're not meant to do the big cuts mm. and the block carving, yeah? And then we'll go in with smaller tools as we get in there, yeah? So, going. so what I'm going to do now is mark that lining I was talking about. It's really helped me out, this tree. Do I? I thought you'd like that one. Yeah, no, I do. <laughs> no, I absolutely do. Actually, this one, I'm going to try and save this one so it'll come out a bit, you know, and then go back in. When you're using these power tools, you, know, <clears throat> you have to remember, yeah, that you, if you push in right, yeah, you're going to mm. absolutely get rid of wood immediately, yeah. So what you have to do is just let it run slowly. Don't push in, yeah. It's a soft thing, yeah. You can see, yeah, the way I'm carving here, yeah, I'm actually putting a direction, yeah, which, which is the same as that root. Going with the flow. Going with the flow of that root, yeah. Just gently, gently, yeah. No pushing, yeah, just... Slowly getting rid of the bark. So we've pretty much got rid of the, the bark on the front of the tree now. And uh, what So if there is such a thing as a focal point, yeah. would you say that this is going to be the focal oh, point of the tree? Absolutely, yeah. This is the whole thing here. It's right okay. here, yeah. You know? you know, so what we're going to do now, yeah, is uh, have a play with light and shadow in there, yeah. Oh. But I'm, what I'm going to do first, right, is just look to see if I can improve the, the edge, the line of this oh. living part, yeah. It's a little bit straight here, yeah, I've noticed, yeah. So I'm just gonna do something with that. And I'll even leave bits of little bits of uh, live candy and like that, yeah. They heal up really nicely, yeah, you know. I'm going to start from right down here. So this tool can do what a router would normally do, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You don't yeah, have to change over to a router. No, that's right. right but this thing it will cut smoothly, yeah? yeah. And uh, whereas a router will bounce about, okay. yeah? Um, this cuts smoothly. If you don't apply too much pressure okay. to it, yeah? It will cut like butter, yeah, you know? Oh, I thought um, a router would cut more, more quickly. No, no. no. 
They're essentially no. both routers. They're both routers, yeah, yeah. But this thing is a smoother cut. No, no, but yeah. the, the one you use with the other one, you know, the Bosch router. Yeah. They have the different type of bit. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they like the yeah. quarter rounds, yeah, yeah, but they kick a lot, yeah. Oh, I see. And these, are, these actually run smoother, okay. yeah. All right. So, okay, you can see what I've done there. Yeah, I've just gone in there, yeah. made an informal shape in there. Right, now what I need to do, right, is I really need to make that hollow, yeah, to get the drama in I there. I see. Um, and also what we need to do is leave the outside uh, fascia, yeah, of the tree yes, yes. intact, because then we won't have a shadow, yeah, okay. if we get rid of this, yeah. If you carve in too deep and open it up, the light okay. floods in there, yeah. and there's no mystery or anything to it, yeah. So I'm just going to start to open it up a little bit more. Just cut the wheel bait into the. You just see that. Yeah. The minute I cut that wheel bait, yeah, that's starting to pop there, yeah. So yeah, it's, you know, when it, it looks like it's really thin because I've cut a rebate into the back of this tree, yeah? Here, yeah. Um, but actually the virtue of that, yeah, is really quite strong. Have a feel of that, Peter, yeah? It's not gonna bust it over time. Because yeah. you would as hard, yeah. eh? You would hard, yeah, but also, right, you have to leave quite a lot there so the virtue is still there, you're over okay. time. So uh, if you cut too thin, obviously it's gonna rot off, yeah, you know? So. Okay. It's very important to keep that rebate yeah, quite chunky, yeah. You can see, yeah, it's much longer, yeah, and the head is much smaller, yeah. So and what it, tool is this called? I actually what don't, I, mean, I don't even actually know what it's called, well, yeah. It's a you know, smaller one. But you can see, yeah, you know what I mean? It's, I don't go by the names, yeah. There's like, you know, the Tornado and the El Nino and the Nibbler and the sorry, Dead sorry. of the, Let me There's a million of them, you know what I mean? But that's the one I use. I don't even know what it's called, yeah. Don't even know the part number yet, but that's the one you're going to need. Okay, small one. Can you compare it with the other one? Yeah. Oh. Now, yeah, let's go deeper, yeah, to make that darker, yeah, so there's more. So why have you changed the a bit? Well, because <clears throat> if you go too deep with this one inside, yeah, it tends to rattle, yeah, you know what I mean? But this it's one, too wide. Yeah, this one has a smaller head. So it can go uh, deeper, yeah. It easily. can go deeper, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Much quicker, yeah. yeah. So... Dark sawdust appearing now. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting into the centre of the tree, yeah. You can see already, yeah, the darkness yeah. in there, you know. I mean, we're getting more of a dramatic feel, yeah. You know, this is uh, reflecting light, yeah, so we have to get rid of all of this, yeah. I'm leaving it proud. Then I clean the wood away from there, yeah. When we come to clean that up, yeah. That will just give an indication, here, yeah, you know. A raised portion. Yeah, you know, where a branch was, yeah. Maybe there was some harder wood, yeah. you know, and it just is a little natural thing that you can do, yeah. Just to... Make it a little bit deeper, yeah. Clean away the excess wood, yeah. <clears throat> but this is where the art, artistic bit comes in. You know, a lot of people carve, they just carve for the sake of carving, 
and sometimes they get trees which are so thin they come and there's nothing left. You know? <laughs> That's what you have to watch out for. The first tree that I ever carved, yeah, was a, a pretty substantial hawthorn, yeah, oh. that was like this, yeah. And um, I went to that show we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, 1990. Yeah, in Birmingham and saw Dan Robinson making a, uh, a juniper into a piece of Swiss cheese. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought, oh my God, yeah, this is incredible. Yeah, something that's immediate in bonsai. So I immediately went home, yeah, bought myself a Makita and, um, and carved the Hawthorne into oblivion. <laughs> you know, um, and then realized, yeah, that there is a point where you have to stop. Are there certain trees which are easier, the wood is easier? Hawthorne is fantastic. Um, you is fantastic. Privet is hard. No, they're all fantastic. Oh. Privet is fantastic to carve. Provided you're cutting into live wood. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, if you, you know, if you start to get into hardwood, yeah, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. uh, there's quite a bit of bouncing going off. But, you know, carving, uh, you know, when they're soft, yeah, and, and still malleable like this, yeah, is uh, probably the best way to carve, yeah, you know. The detail, yeah, is another thing, yeah. That comes when the wood's seasoned, yeah. And you can do the small things, yeah, with the, you know, with the uh, Dremel, yeah. Mm. So anyway, do you want to suck that in? What I'm going to do now is clean that, yeah. <coughs> so we're using the Dremel now. So you're switching to the Dremel. So it's a less powerful tool. It's less powerful. Yes. And you get finer work? Yeah, you can get finer work, yeah. And if you leave that tree for one year to season, yeah. then you can get in there and do much finer work, yeah, okay. without it fluffing up like okay. marrow, yeah. yeah. You know, what you want is it to carve, you know, like season wood. Yeah. Yeah. And the good tools are okay for the time being, yeah. yeah. You can see, yeah, as, um, as that thing smoothed off, it's looking more and more nice. Yeah, it looks very nice. It's facing upwards, yeah? yeah. Well, now, when we style the tree, every single branch here, we're going to have to show the snow here on this tree, mm -hmm. yeah? And it's a mountain tree, yeah? So we're going to show the snow on it, yeah? And this one right here is in the wrong direction. Mm. So anything that's facing up on a tree should have been... Uh, a desiccated trunk, yeah, you know what I mean, that was facing upwards, yeah. So you need something to be a little bit bigger, yeah, if it's going upright. If it's a gin, yeah, you know what I mean, it needs to be in the same rhythm, like we were talking, yeah, about the fractals, yeah. This needs to be in the same rhythm, yeah. So I'm going to have to shorten this, yeah, and, and disguise it and make it look like it's going down, yeah. So what I'm going to do... <clears throat> uh, I was trying to do that via telekinesis, but it doesn't work. Yeah, you are on that one, aren't you? Yeah. So, first off... So you can see I've changed the direction yeah. of that gin. And I've it looks also, like curved. Yeah, and I've also cut underneath, yeah, yeah you know. So it looks as like curved. Yeah, so, you know, it's not, it was straight, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the other thing is, if you're carving a stump, yeah, where you've got one branch coming out here, yeah, and you need to do a sabamiki that's got some energy in it that, that stops it being straight, what you do is you carve your profiles in, yeah, before you cut the interior out. You know, it's very important, yeah, you can't just go cutting the interior out, you have to get the profiles right. So now I'm going to give some thought to what's going on here where we're going to finish. Okay, we'll look at that again because the back we were discussing, that straight branch does quite interesting things, isn't it? It 
It is interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it comes out there, then goes round, wraps itself round. But then when it comes out that side, it's absolutely straight. Yes. <laughs> straight. So I think probably what we're going to do here is just cut it, yeah? And, what, uh, cut it down to there, maybe? No, I think maybe right down to there, yeah, you know what I mean? You know? Okay. Yeah, you know, we need it out of the way, basically, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not going to be the top, oh. yeah, you know what I mean? But, the angle is wrong anyway. Yeah, but it could maybe do, you yeah. know, make something later on down the line, yeah? Yeah, okay. So, I'm not going to be able to saw, do it. Saw, 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 lopper, saw, lopper. Saw, saw. Lopper, lopper, lopper. Big lopper. Joe, you do it. <laughs> tell him, tell him where. Right there, Joe, but that not easy. Yeah. Get rid of some of the some of these ones that are distracting me now. Yeah, that are actually dead. Like this one. This one here. But yeah, we can cut the tape bridge into this. We can get the energy into this branch. Yeah. So. What are you going to do with the top now? Yeah, well, that's it. That's the top it. thirty centimeter, yeah, twelve I'm inches. Are you going to carve that or cut it off completely? I think I'm going to cut it off because it's so powerful. I want yeah. to keep the power, yeah? Yeah, if it is so, too tall, the sense of power tends to get lost, it isn't it? It gets lost, yeah. So if it's a short, stumpy, strong tree like a sumo wrestler, That's it. it looks stronger. So... Have we got a small chainsaw? We haven't, no. <laughs> <laughs> Can you Joe, hold can the you just hold the top for me? Don't pull it or anything, just hold no. it where it is. Yeah. Look at the dark wood in there. Look at that, Peter. Well, we can count the rings. Can one of you count the rings? It just shows it's not that old. Who's got good eyesight? You need a felt tip, yeah, just to dot every ring. It's not that old, yeah. As I say, I planted it 25 it? years ago. That's about right. Yeah. Yeah, so. you get, I've counted 17 until I get to there and then they and get then very close and tight. 17, so 25, I'm not bluffing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you bought this tree from Japan, they probably say it's 100 years yeah, old, 150 <laughs> year old. <laughs> I remember in the 60s and 70s, all the bonsai came in, they were either 10, 20, 50, 100, 150, and 200. <laughs> okay. Are you going to take the hollow right to the top now, Kev? Yeah, what I'm going to do now is, um, is cut a profile into that top yeah. and then make a feather meaty at the top. Yeah? Okay. I take it you're trying to introduce some curves to the top to soften it? Yeah, we have this way, yeah? Yeah. It comes this way, yeah? So what I'm trying to do now is... <coughs> well, actually, it's really important, yeah? I said it earlier on, yeah? You, <coughs> what you do is imagine, yeah, what was there, mm -hmm. not what is there, yeah. yeah? So what I'm imagining now is this tree comes this way, yeah? Comes up and had a bed this way, yeah? Okay. So that's what I'm imagining. Right. What, so what, the top would have broken at some point? Yeah, what, what was there, yeah? So I'm giving it direction, yeah? So 
you actually think there was a bane here this way. <clears throat> and that's why I said cut the profiles first, yeah? And then start to carve, yeah, you know what I mean? And then you start to get the more natural feel to it. So, yeah. <clears throat> So this you this is as far as we've got looking very good the height's been reduced by a third and now Richard is doing some wiring to the tree and then we will see the end result so we've only done like barely two hours work on this tree and there you are now we're going to look at another one